للمتقين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Welcome back everyone to our uh, next episode of Quran 30 for 30 and alhamdulillah rabbil alamin we're moving on now to just four i pray that allah azza wa jal has uh, allowed you to taste the sweetness of this very unique ramadan thus far and i pray that you're developing a good connection to the quran to remind everyone inshallah ta'ala to please tune in to all of the different series that we have uh, we'll be doing this nightly and inshallah ta'ala we also have the angel series every day as well as from deep to habit and inshallah you can find more information at the Yaqeen Institute social media handles. So I'm going to get right into it, inshallah ta'ala, because I don't want to take away from our very special guest today, mashallah, uh, who's with us, Dr. Tamar Gay, Gray, alhamdulillah. Um, we've talked a lot, and subhanAllah, um, the last few abza reflected a lot on the mistakes of previous nations. And something occurred to me, and as I said, when we first started the series, the beauty of the Qur'an is that every time you read it, something new just pops out at you if you're paying close enough attention. And typically, you know, we go from immediately Bani Israel uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah and the mistakes of Bani Israel, and then, you know, mistakes in, 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 the, in, in the way that previous nations dealt with their prophets and the way that they dealt with the law and how we learned from those mistakes. But there's something very, very specific that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admonishes us with as we get into this juz in particular. Allah setting the standard with us. And I want to start this off with a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ where the Prophet ﷺ said, I asked Allah for three things. Very relevant right now. I asked Allah for three things. I asked Allah that he would not allow this ummah to be wiped out by a, an army, an external enemy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him that alayhi salatu wassalam and he asked allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we would not be wiped out by a plague this ummah will not die collectively as a result of a plague and allah granted him that but i asked allah the third thing Allah that disunity does not become the cause for their, their destruction and allah did not give the prophet وسلم, that answer and subhanallah as we look at this juz all of the admonishing of this ummah is about disunity. As if to say that the previous nations failed for these reasons, here is your nation's failure if you don't get a hold of it. And it starts from the very, very beginning. Until the end of the ayah. And as uh, a few of you said in feedback that you want the verse numbers. So it's verse 102 and 103. Allah says, hold firmly to the rope of Allah altogether and do not become divided. And remember the favor of Allah upon you when you were enemies and he brought your hearts together and you became by his blessing brothers and you were on the edge of the fire and he saved you from it. Thus does Allah make clear to you his verses that you may be guided. If you look through the history of Islam and the history of the Muslim Ummah, our problems have always been internal. It's the internal divisions that allow for the external to prey upon us in a way that they exploit those differences and then use that against us. And this is a theme throughout this juz. So what's your mandate as an Ummah? Stay united. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 104, and let there be arising from you a nation inviting to all that is good, enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong. And those will be the successful. Those are the people that will be successful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says once again, And do not be like those before who were divided amongst themselves and they, uh, and, and they, and they allowed those divisions to allow, to, to misguide them after clear proofs and clear guidance had come to them. So SubhanAllah, this is, once again, your nation needs to stay united. And Allah again puts this on us. You know, sometimes you hear these ayat, these verses about how Allah describes this ummah, and you assume they're in different surahs. It seems like they're all in this juz. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas, ta'mununa bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkar. That you are the best nation that's been produced for the people you enjoin what is right and forbid what is evil, and you believe in Allah. That's verse 110. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes to the next one. And this is, this is so beautiful and powerful. 
If you're taking notes, the fourth part of Ali Imran, which is verse 121 to 200, was revealed particularly after the Battle of Uhud. And I should mention that all of the surahs thus far are Madani surahs. They're surahs that were revealed in the Madani after the Prophet ﷺ made Hijrah to Medina. But particularly after verse 121, this was revealed after, surat, uh, after the Battle of Uhud, where the Muslims faced their first defeat. Okay? And, the, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ غَدَوْتُ مِنْ أَهْلِكَ تُبَوِّئُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ مَقَاعِدُ لِلْقِتَالِ وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ And remember when you, O Muhammad, left your family in the morning to post the believers to their stations for the Battle of Uhud, and Allah is all hearing and Allah knowing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, you know, subhanAllah, remember the Muslims now have to be introspective and sometimes in defeat, you'll learn the lessons that are necessary for long-term victory. Look what happened to you when you didn't follow the orders of Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah reminds, it wasn't about your lack of numbers. It wasn't about what you didn't have. It was what? وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّةٍ Remember when Allah supported you in Badr? When you were few in number, okay? You didn't have much in Badr. But remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported you then? And so it's befitting that Allah calls the believers attention to a time where they broke the covenant to make the point about, about how victory comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how help comes from Allah when they stay together upon that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded. And of course, uh, Uhud happened, or the defeat of Uhud came because of a few people, 40 people from the mountain of archers that came down against the command of the Prophet wasallam, and in the process not only uh, put forth their own disobedience of the Messenger wasallam, but compromised the entire Ummah in the process, including the Prophet wasallam, And they all suffered as a result of it. Why? Because of the fear of the loss of dunya because they feared that the spoils would run out before they got to it. So Allah is saying, look, uh, look at Bani Israel, look at the nations that came before. You, you know, it's not istihza billah or bi'ayat illah that you're doing, mocking the, the signs of Allah or the, or the verses of Allah or, or breaking the covenant in the way that Bani Israel necessarily broke the covenant. But when you disobeyed Allah and the Messenger وسلم, even though you had numbers, you failed. Whereas when you were obedient and together, you succeeded because of the mercy and the favor of Allah being upon you. Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah has a beautiful uh, statement here where he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connected ni'matallahi uh, alaykum idh kuntum a'da and he mentioned his ni'mah twice, his blessing when you are together as if to say that the blessing of Allah is only upon us when we're united. The ni'mah of Allah is only upon us when we're united as an ummah. Otherwise, we're our worst enemies. Finally, verse 144. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that what happened in Uhud is that the people gave up because they thought that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was dead. And Allah says, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُولُ أَفَا إِنْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلًا قَرَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ Muhammad is not but a messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Other messengers have passed on before him. If he dies or if he is killed, would you turn back on your heels to unbelief once again? Would you go back to that again? The summary of this, and then I'll pass it to Shaykh Abdullah uh, in this beautiful chapter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reminds us what? That Allah Azza wa Jal is with us when we are together. Verse 160. If Allah is with you, who can be against you? If Allah is with you, who can be against you? And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abandons you, then who's going to be able to support you uh, after that? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, finally expresses his forgiveness to the believers that turn back. So this was not to say that the covenant has been taken from you as an ummah, but was to say that you are forgiven. Allah has forgiven those who turned away in Badr, uh, in Uhud. And then finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also uh, to be uh, kind-hearted and gentle uh, with the people uh, and to be forgiving towards his people and not to turn away from them as a result of this. So you are not an ummah that's to be disgraced. You're an ummah that made a mistake. Learn from the mistake. Stay together upon what Allah and his Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave you and you will have success. Shaykh Abdullah, tafadlam. It's the baton again, huh? MashaAllah. <laughs> <laughs>
Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ala ba'd. He actually mentioned one of my favorite verses. Subhanallah, as all the you know verses are beautiful, but he talked about the verse of you know al aws wal khazraj, where Allah subhanahu wa taala said wa atasimu bi hamdillahi jami'an wa la tafarruqu. And talking about the means of brotherhood and for them to remember when they were once enemies and how because of the belief, because of their their recognition in their hearts is what kept them together by the permission of Allah. And that's exactly what I want to address, inshallah, because when you look at the pages where Allah SWT is talking about uh, roughly uh, from Ayah 122 to 129, he's talking about the Battle of Badr. And he's talking about how Allah SWT assisted them, where he mentions, And Allah SWT has not made this as a congratulations for you and for your hearts to be content. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, as he mentioned earlier, Woman nasru illa min indillahi al aziz al hakim, and the help of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, is is nasr min indillahi illa woman nasru illa min indillahi al aziz al hakim, and there is no help or assistance except from Allah, the Almighty, the All Wise. But what I want to capitalize on here is near the near the end of that page, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala transitions and talks about briefly. He talks about the actions that could lead to the hellfire, where he says, after Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in verse number one thirty, Ya amanu tuflihun. O you who believe, do not take uh, interest in, in in great amounts or in multitudes. Fear Allah, perhaps you may be of the successful. And fear the fire that has been prepared, been prepared for those that are ungrateful and disbelieving. So what takuna or let the uiddat it has been prepared, and as some scholars mention that the hellfire is present now, that it is here now. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Well, Allah wa Rasulah la alakum turhamun. And fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or and obey Allah and the messenger, perhaps you will be shown mercy. But then Allah does an atuf, he does, he adds again, it's like he's continuing. He says, Wasari'u ila malfirati mir rabbikum, wa jannatin ardu has samawatu wal ardu uiddat. So Allah is saying, as in the verse before, verse number 120, 132, and obey Allah and the messenger, perhaps you will be shown mercy, and also sari'u. And sari'u comes from like how we say bisura'ah, or to go fast, or to rush, haste towards maghfirah. And what is beautiful here is as uh, the scholars mention, uh, Tahrim al-Ashur, mashallah, mentions that wasari'u uh, ila maghfirah, Yani to, to, to rush towards the actions that would necessitate or that would imply that you need maghfirah. And from that is uh, ta'atullah wa rasulahu, is obeying Allah and his messenger, which we understand that any good deed that you do, if you're sincere, it could be, be a means of maghfirah and seeking forgiveness. That's why when someone converts to Islam, this is one of the greatest expiations because you have done the most important thing, being that you recognize that God needs to be worshiped you know, by himself, and you, you've voluntarily done that, and you want to do actions of morality and goodness for, for God's sake. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering now, and rush towards forgiveness, meaning rush towards the actions that would bring you forgiveness. From your Lord, Ah, this is beautiful. He said, rush towards forgiveness and, and Jannah, and also Jannah, that its expansion or its size or its width or its mass, mass is like that of the ard samawati wal ard as the heavens or the earth, not in actuality, but to give taqrib and ma'ana, to show you that it is vast, it is vast. And we do not know the actuality of it. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فيها ما لعين, ما لعين رأت ولا أذن سمعت وما خطر على قلب بشر. That Jannah, the reality of it, is that we don't know, it's what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and has not even come across the senses of man. They can't fathom it. But here Allah says at the end of it, just as he mentioned before, that the hellfire was present and prepared for those that are ungrateful and disbelieving. But then for the believers, for the muttaqin, it is prepared already there for the ones that have mindfulness of Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains who are the muttaqin. He explains who they are. He says, So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives here darajat, darajat. He gives levels. So who are the muttaqin? So there are three categories and some say four. 
The first one is those who spend in prosperity and in adversity. You know, when you have a lot of money, you, your check has come in, mashallah, things are great. Sometimes uh, you may forget and may be diverted and may be distracted. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alhakum takathur. You were diverted and distracted from a takathur, gathering things in abundance, money, stature, reputation. It diverted you from gratitude. It diverted you from giving back to those that are in need, from giving back for the sake of Allah. And dharra, well, I don't have enough, I can't give. You know, the Prophet ﷺ said that charity does not decrease the wealth. You know, subhanAllah, it's a beautiful thing that when we give in times of need, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, is a virtuous thing. When you're shahih, sahih, when you are at bakhil, when you don't want to give, but you force yourself to give because you know that it's something that's better, of the intangible. And sahih, you are healthy. So here he says, sarra wa dharra wa al al ghayd, and that's the second category. Calvin is like someone that suppresses something. And what's beautiful here is that Islam is not unrealistic. You know, sometimes we fall victim to say, you know, I want practical Islam. You know, I want something practical. Well, the lack of understanding Islam or being told by someone that has fiqh, fiqh, fiqh of their religion, is that's where the flaw is. It is not within the sharia itself. It is within the practitioners of the Sharia. So when we say Allah is acknowledging that we will get angry. Every single human being, we will get angry. There will be a level of anger. But what the Calvin does is he or she controls it and suppresses it. As some scholars mentioned that this Calvin is like boiling inside that does not, it is not shown through the actions because you have held yourself now we are at home and we, you know, throughout our lives with our family members, with, with friends, with, you know, things we may see on the television. When you have the ability and the strength to display or exhibit that anger, you suppress it. And that is what is beautiful. And that's the jihad in nafs that is fighting the soul for that which is better for us. That's the second category. As we know, Allah's name is Al-Afu. You know, as we say, Nasallallah salama wal afiyah, we always hear all the time, inshallah, it's in a good context, that we ask Allah for to make us, give, him, give us salam, to make us sound and good health. But the origin of the word afu or afa, ya'fu, comes from making something easy. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the chapter of Al-An'am, khudhi al-afu, wa'mul bin ma'roof. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, khudhi al-afu, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in order to do the good or take the Afu, to be easy. Take the easy route when dealing with people. Take the easy route when dealing with people. That you are easy with them. So when someone pardons you, they're taking the easy route with you, even though they have the strength to overpower you. So Allah is al Afu, He pardons us. And some scholars make the differentiation between Afu and Ghufran. Is that Afu is that it is as though it never took place in Ghufran and Ghafar. Like the sin is still there, but He covers it up, Subhana. So those are the three. He says, وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ Then Allah says, وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Let's notice one thing here. Is that Allah says, and. He says, the ones that spin in ease and in hardship, and the ones that suppress their anger, the ones that spin in ease and in hardship, and they suppress their anger, and the one that pardons people. But he doesn't say, and the good doers, the muhsinin. He stops and he says, وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ And some scholars mention, you hibbu because ihsan is the highest level. As we know in the hadith Jibreel, what is ihsan? An ka To worship Allah as though you see him and though you do not see him, he sees you. You're aware of his presence. Everything that you do is in light of the presence of Allah. It is as though you see him. Like when you see someone that you want to impress, many of our children want to do that. It is as though you know Allah is watching you to the degree that you see him. And that is a muhsin. And even linguistically, hasuna comes from to beautify something. The actions that you do, as we translate it as excellence, not perfection, not perfection, not perfection, excellence. Because excellence expresses, yeah, Allah, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. Help me. I'm trying my best. That is the Morsin. You may not make your five prayers. You may haven't, made, may haven't been able to make tahajjud yet, but you're saying yet. Because you have good expectations of Allah, and you try your best hoping in Allah. That is the Muhsin. 
And some scholars mentioned these three categories that were mentioned earlier are the ones that the muhsin will reach. That is the characteristics of the muhsin. And moving on to the next verse briefly, I'm not going to cover all of it, but Allah SWT mentions, The ones that they, if they've done bad deeds, fahisha, an excessive of bad deeds, just bad deeds, something that they regret, or they've oppressed themselves, knowing that sin is an oppression of themselves. What do they do? Allah. They remember Allah. They remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't want to take too much time, but in conclusion, in, in finishing that verse, which is the verse number 135, what Ibn Rajab mentions is a beautiful point that the first portion of the verse of number 134, where he mentions the three categories and then mentions the Muhsin, which some may classify as four, is that this deals with the individual with other people, that you give charity to other people. Someone may make you angry, right? And you suppress that anger. And a higher level than that is that you pardon that person. And all of that is an example to ihsan ila al-ghayr. Mm. Ihsan ila al-ghayr. And then the second category of the next verse of 135 deals with how you deal with yourself. You commit a sin. You stop. You recollect. You remember. And you do something about it. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us within these times we're facing, as, is, as he mentioned with the community, even over Zoom, Zoom we still maintain the community and do things that bring us together as we are doing now. May Allah make this a blessed gathering, inshallah ta'ala. Barakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So inshallah ta'ala, our special guest for tonight, uh, we have with us uh, Dr. Tamara Gray, alhamdulillah. We're blessed to have her, uh, the founder of Rabata, and inshallah ta'ala, uh, she will uh, give us the, the beautiful khitam that we're looking for with this just tafadali. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, salatu wassalam ala khatul anbiya Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ishaab ajma'in. MashaAllah, very uh, beautiful words that you all were sharing and this um, concept of unity and coming together and how this particular jizit is really calling out to all of us to think about the other and to be concerned with how we are how we are living in community or not in community either way. And at the end of the surah, we have some very clear and direct instructions around, I would say, how to be a person who has the energy to be able to come back to community in a healthy way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm in verse 191, 192, 93, 94, and 95, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقَعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ This is, These are very famous verses. We, I'm sure we've heard them a lot. There, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the one who remembers Allah standing or sitting or lying on their sides, uh, and these different positions of worship, these different positions of zikr. You know, we have two different types of forgetfulness and, and among that we that spiritual, we two different types of forgetfulness that I referred to in the Quran. Uh, actually, there are three, but one is the forgetfulness, the one who's forget who forgets by abandoning. So we abandon Ya Latif, inshallah, we don't become of these people, but one who abandons good works. That's a type of forgetfulness. And another type of forgetfulness is when we don't remember information. But the the dhikr, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقَعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ This is every position of the human being. So the human being might be standing, the human being might be sitting, the human being might be lying down. In all of these positions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling us, on us to be of those who are, of those who remember, have dhikr, and of those that الارض, and of those who uh, contemplate, contemplate the universe, contemplate uh, the earth, contemplate where we are and what we're doing. And what this does is it pulls us back and it pull, puts us into this space where three things happen. One is we understand who we are in relationship to the rest of the world who we're supposed to be, people of remembrance. One of the early scholars said that for the one who wants to really know Quran, based on this verse, they should recite it standing, recite it sitting in a position of study, 
And he recited it standing in a position of prayer, recite it uh, sitting in a position of study, excuse me, and recite it lying down in a position of re relaxation. Because the Quran is that which we establish and stand and we stand for and we live for. The Quran is that which we study and that which fills our mind. And the Quran is what gives us rest. The Quran is what gives us the ability to stand back up again, if you will, and uh, move out into this world where we go out and interact with people and pull community together. Uh, we are, we've become a very, our, our lack of community has a lot to do with being sensitive, getting upset, all these sort of very um, shallow things that that tell us, that should tell us that we are a people without ibadah, that we are a people who are missing out on ibadah. And if you look at these verses and you continue, you see that there's this beautiful, Rabbana innana sama'na munadiya yunadi lil iman. Ya Allah, oh our Lord, uh, indeed we have heard a caller calling to faith, calling, calling to believe, come, come, come and believe. An aminu bi rabbikum fa'amanna. Come and believe. So we believed. And the, the, so we heard, we acted, then we say, Rabbana, uh, Rabbana, faghfir lana dhunubana. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, forgive us our sin. The three things we need to be forgiven, to be pardoned, and to be uh, raised up with the people of piety. And if you look around and find the people of piety, you can learn how to live like them as well. And in learning how to live like them, if we live like the people of piety, then we live like the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. There's a beautiful dua. Uh, I probably won't remember it right now, but in, in its meaning, it says, Ya Allah, grant me the mercy that you granted those who lowered their gaze in front of the Prophet ﷺ. So who are they? These are the companions. These are the people of Abrar. These are the people of Birr. These are the people who knew how to have adab and act with the Prophet Sallallahu These are the people who responded to the call, the call to faith. Ramadan. This is Ramadan. And every single one of us are, are being called. The angels are calling us. The month is calling us. This time is calling us. The Quran is calling us. Aminu, 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 believe. And every verse in the Quran, aminu wa aminu salihati, it always comes together because the way we live is a reflection of what we believe. And the, the last verse in this little section that I'm thinking about today is, is bring, circles us right back to this concept of how do we live together in society? Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And their Lord responded to them, never will I allow to be lost the work of any one of you, whether male or female. So whatever you are doing, whatever is exhausting, whatever is hard, whatever is easy, whatever you're putting extra effort in and not a single human being sees, this verse comes and reminds you, you heard the call, aminu, aminu, hadir, okay, amanna, amanna. And then you got, and then you responded to that call in what, in ibad, in dhikr and tafakkur. Yani in dhikr, in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in standing, in our standing, we remember Allah. In our sitting, we remember Allah. When we're lying down, we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our ability to contemplate the earth, and then in our movement, in our action, in protecting ourselves from the heaven and, excuse me, from the hellfire and gaining access to the heaven that uh, Sheikh Abdullah, right, talked about. And uh, we reach then to this place where we have comfort. Just in case you're in a place today where you're being treated unfairly, which so many people are today. To be treated unfairly in this life is a, it's part of, it's part of living. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, we're human. But فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ أَنِّي لَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't lose, doesn't allow to be lost the deeds of any one of us. So think what you did today. But did you, did you wash a dish? Did you read extra Quran? Did you call somebody who you should have called? Did you forget to do things that you should have done? All of this is held for us. It doesn't matter who we are. All of this is held for us. And uh, to circle back finally to what we began with tonight, 
بعضكم من بعض. That's how this. He won't be lost, allowed any of this work to be lost, whether you are male or female. You are one of another. So here we are, not just as tribes and nations, but together as uh, men and women coming together. فَالَّذِينَ هَاجِرُوا وَأُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ وَأُوذُوا فِي السَّبِيلِ وَقَاتِلُوا Sorry. وَقَاتِلُوا وَقُتِلُوا Whatever you do, what do you do? Did you go on Hijra? Did you not go on Hijra? Did you leave your house? Did you stay in your house? Did you go out and fight? Did you, were you fought against? Whatever you did, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. And تَجْرِي شو وَلَأُدْخِلْنَا شو Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Well, um, they will be put, thank you, they will be put into the Jannah, under which is rivers. I, I find this image very beautiful, this idea of garden with rivers flowing underneath it, because they're, they're rivers that cause great beauty. And um, I mean, we don't know what Jannah looks like, but they just, for me in my head, they, they it's very much a welcoming sound and a welcoming smell and a welcoming it's like saying all oh, come on let's go let's all go and have fun with these beautiful rivers and these beautiful gardens as we are all together in that space so um ramadan ya jama'a standing sitting lying down so remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recites quran have the word the names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hearts and in our tongue on our tongues and not let any moment of this month escape us Subhanallah. One thing that uh, to, to bring it all back for everyone, by the way, is that Surah Al-Fatiha is a dua. Surah Al-Baqarah ends with a dua. Surah Ali Imran ends with a dua. Uh, a supplication, a supplication, a supplication. It encapsulates all of the, these first three chapters of the Quran. It teaches us, as we said, this is now the mandate to the Ummah, to our nation, to stay together, busy with Allah, not let the shaitan make us busy with ourselves. Stay busy with Allah. Have ihsan, as Shaykh Abdullah talked about, with other people and forgiving when we're not expected to forgive, spending charity when we're not expected to uh, spend, and then have ihsan with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even when it's just ourselves, excellence with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with ourselves, that we seek forgiveness, uh, uh, you know, whenever we do something wrong, even if we're not caught, even if no one else saw it, we have ihsan with Allah, we're, we're thinking about the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then finally, those beautiful verses that Dr. Tamra uh, left us off with, uh, which were the 10 verses that the Prophet ﷺ would recite when he woke up to pray Qiyam al -Nid. So when he would wake up to pray Qiyam, the Prophet ﷺ would recite those last 10 verses of Shurat Ali Imran. Jazakumullah khairan, Dr. Tamra, for joining us. Jazakumullah khair, Shaykh Abdullah. And inshallah ta'ala, uh, for the rest of you, uh, please do keep us in your dua. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, as well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.